We've got not one, but two 100 amp hour batteries from XZ and Y to test out today. These are the 100 amp hour ultra mini lithium iron phosphate batteries. We're gonna take a look at them this time on Ham Radio 2. So XZNY contacted me via email, asked if I'd be interested in reviewing these batteries. I've never heard of them before, but naturally I said yes. Right now at the time of filming, these batteries are on Amazon for $169, but there's a 10% coupon that you can also hit that'll save you another $17, which makes these like $165 out the door after tax. Kinda hard to beat the price if they deliver. So let's put this through the ranks, but first let's take a look at these guys. And here it is, the 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour, ultra mini lithium iron phosphate deep cycle battery. I love these miniature 100 amp hour batteries that we're starting to see flood the market. So much capacity in such a small box. Obviously we get the battery, we're gonna get some lugs. I really like the fact that they sent these smaller, these are about a half inch lug, but then they also sent along these larger lugs in case you need to connect multiple wires to the terminals, which I'm going to be doing. So that's fantastic. You get a couple of these little safety guys here when the battery's not in use. And we also get some information here, just kind of some advertisements and a user manual. Now, the user manual and the Amazon listing have some inconsistencies that I'm kind of curious about. The max continuous charge current, they rate at 120 amps, as well as the max continuous discharge current, they rate at 120 amps. Yet, on their Amazon page, they mention, and I quote, the 12 volt battery can deliver a maximum continuous current of 100 amps and a peak current of 300 amps for five seconds with a maximum output power of 1280 watts. So, there's a bit of a discrepancy between 120 amps and 100 amps. The 300 amps for five seconds is the same. So we are going to test that. It also talks about protection, short circuit, over voltage, over discharge, over current, and temperature. No mention in the manual of low temperature protection, although they do advertise this on the website as having low temperature protection as well as undercurrent protection or under voltage protection. And then it goes on with your typical fare of a manual, kind of talking about the battery voltage, connecting series and parallel, stuff like that. So it's well written, it's just inconsistent between their listing on Amazon. Taking a look at the top, we are presented with a nice handle that collapses on top of itself. I really like that. These are great for transporting. And then we have our positive and negative terminals. These are M8 terminals, so metric. The shorter ones are 17 millimeters long and the longer ones are 30 millimeters long. So I really love when battery companies send longer terminals so you can attach more wires. That's I, something about that. It's just, it's the little details. So I do like that. And on the back, we've got the watt rating, an email forum, and we see a three year free replacement. If there's any non-human induced damage to the battery within three years, you can contact us to obtain a new battery. So hopefully they honor that. As far as size, like I said, these mini batteries are awesome. We're just under nine inches wide. We are uh, about eight and a quarter tall and about five and three eighths wide. Now they did send me two of these batteries. So for consistency, I took a black Sharpie and marked one black dot on battery one and two black dots on battery two. So I know which battery is which. Now let's see what these things can do. Now the first thing I do when I receive batteries for test, I charge them fully and then I do a complete discharge test to test the capacity. And I can tell you these both pass with flying carpets. Battery one, I had a little bit of an error when I did the discharge test. I forgot to reset my battery testing meter and it already had 19 amp hours roughly on it. And when the test was ended, it was 121 amps. So roughly 102 amp hours out of battery number one. I don't know when in the test I looked at that 19 amp hours that was already on the meter. So uh, I'm not 100% about this capacity. Battery two, I did remember to reset and I got 104.89 amp hours out of this. So both of these passed the capacity test with flying carpets. 
So now I'm going to hook my inverter up to these. We're going to test how well the BMS actually protects these batteries. Again, it's rated for, I'm going to say 120 amps because that's what the user manual states. So we'll go with the higher 120 amp continuous discharge and a 300 amp for five seconds max continuous discharge. And we want to make sure that the BMS or battery management system is actually protecting the cells in the way it's designed. So let's do that. So first we're going to start off with battery one. I've got two black and two red one aught gauge pure copper welding wire to make sure we've got enough wire to put as much current to our inverter as possible. I've also got a 250 amp breaker and uh, my amp meter here. So let's go ahead and turn the system on, turn the inverter on. Let's see, we've got 13.3 volts at the inverter. We'll go ahead and start with our heat gun on low which is about 61 amps on the meter there. About 680, 690 watts out of the inverter. We're still seeing 12.7 volts at the inverter there. Now let's go ahead and kick this into high. This, on high power, this should be over 120 amps, I believe. Uh, so let's see if the BMS shuts off. We're at about 122 amps now. 123, 12.2 volts at the inverter, 1,340 watts, holding steady about 123.9 amps. And we're not seeing any shutdown of the BMS, pretty close to what it's rated for at 120 amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the space heater on and then uh, maybe we'll kick the heat gun onto low power and see what that does. So we'll kick this guy up to full power that's pulling about 94, 93 and a half amps there, 1,040 watts. We'll let this guy fully heat up for a minute. And that's pretty good, sitting at about 89.9 amps, call it 90 amps, go ahead and turn the heat gun on low. This should give us 150 amps, which should trip the BMS on this. We'll find out, 152.8 amps. 1,660 watts, we're seeing 11.9 volts at the inverter. We'll let this go for a couple minutes. All right, so it's been a couple minutes at 150, 151, 152 amps, no shut off uh, protection from the BMS yet. Still, the terminals are still cool, so there's not really any, any heating. I mean, they're, they're, they've barely warmed up at all. So now I'm gonna turn the space heater back on. We'll put the uh, heat gun here at high power and see what that'll do for us. And let's go straight into high power. 200, uh, pulling just about 200 amps right now. 2170 watts, 2180 fluctuating there. 11.5 volts at the inverter. Still not shutting off. Overcurrent protection should have shut this off by now, so not looking too good. And after a couple minutes at 200 amps, we still don't have any shutdown of the BMS. Terminals are starting to warm up ever so slightly, but nothing, uh, nothing at all to be worried about. The top, though, is getting pretty hot. Well, warm, I should say. So now all there is to do is put more current to it and see if this BMS will actually trip. So now we're gonna turn on a heater, a heat gun, and a vacuum cleaner. 281 amps, 3,000 watts. I don't know if I can pull any more out of this to get over 300 amps. I might have to go find something else. Still getting some voltage drop in the cables though. We're at 10.9 volts on the inverter. We're holding steady at about 276.6 amps and it just shut off. So finally, we have some overcurrent protection. The, uh, the top here is getting a bit warm. So uh, at some point the BMS actually does its job. So that's a good thing. Now let's test battery two. But before we do, I wanna see if this BMS will reset itself. And we're at 3.1 volts. So it hasn't reset itself. So I'm gonna give it a minute and see if it does. Uh, this, you might have to jumpstart this with like a 12 volt source or something. Uh, because it's still in protection mode right now. So we'll see what happens after a minute. In the meantime, I went ahead and set up battery two and 
as we can see, we've got 12.57 volts from battery one. So the BMS did turn back on after it's been about five minutes. So that is nice. We don't need to hook a power supply or anything up to the battery to jumpstart that BMS once it trips. Give it a couple minutes, you're back on uh, back with electricity. So that's great. So now let's test battery two. Go ahead and turn our breaker on, turn the inverter on. I'm just gonna go straight to high power with the heat gun. Make sure it can handle that 120 uh, amp load. And then we'll go ahead and crank it up. Really just checking for consistency now to see if uh, the quality control is there. So here we go. About 119, 120.5 amps, give or take 1330 watts, 1340 watts. I'll let this go for a minute. So it's been about three minutes at uh, roughly 122 amps, handled it no problem. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of warming here. The battery on the top, about 88 degrees or so, 92 I just saw. So I think some of the circuitry is on the back. On, on battery one, I'm seeing about 109 degrees in some places. It's cooling down a little bit, but it did heat up quite a bit when we were pushing almost 300 amps through it. So let's go ahead and crank the current and see what she does. Turn on our heater, about 90 amps there. We'll go ahead and just kick this guy up to full power. 204 amps, 2200 watts. All right, so we've been about three minutes now at 200 amps. We are starting to warm up a bit here. Uh, 107 degrees, 105, 104. So I think there, there's 109.6. So she's definitely starting to heat up, which is fine. We're totally pulling more power than this thing is rated. Still no BMS trip. So let's go ahead and add more power. Heater. Heat gun and vacuum. Oh, look at that. That one tripped right away. Oh, and it turned back on. All right. Let's add more current again. 282 amps. That was weird. It tripped and then just turned right back on. And now we're pulling 280 amps out of it and it's not shutting down. Huh. Well, let's keep going. 116 degrees I just saw, 116.8, 120. Terminals are getting a little warm, as to be expected. Pulling 275 amps, 3,000 watts. And we just shut off, all right. Good. So that was approximately, ah, oh, that was about a minute at 275 amps there, uh, and the BMS finally kicked in. Now, is that due to overcurrent or is that due to overheat? Who knows? We're looking uh, 132 degrees there, I just saw. Let's see, what are the terminals at? Terminals aren't too hot, 98.5 degrees roughly. But yeah, the top of the battery is definitely warm and it's getting warm in this room too. So uh, we do have some protection on these, so that's good. And let's see what our terminal voltage is after shutdown. Oh, this one turned on quicker. We're at 12.8 volts again already. What are we at on this? This one's gone back up to 13.29 after the batteries have recuperated from that huge load. So. This one definitely recovered faster than this one, but they both recovered. I mean, it's been about 30 seconds since that last clip, so uh, they're both doing what they're supposed to, but uh, at slightly different times. I did run this one a little bit longer, uh, and it's interesting that this one rebounded uh, a lot faster, but yeah, they both did exactly what they're supposed to do, sort of. Now the last thing I want to check is low temperature charge protection, which they advertise these have. I think that should be in every single lithium iron phosphate battery. So I'm going to put these in my 12 volt cooler. I've got it set at the absolute lowest temperature that it can be. I'm going to let them sit overnight and I'll see you tomorrow. 
All right, so it's been about 23 and a half hours that these batteries have been in the freezer. I just took them out. We've got battery one hooked up to a 20 amp charger right now. Got our meter in here. We'll go ahead and turn it on and hopefully this should not charge. Hey, look at that. It doesn't, no current going into the battery. That is fantastic. Battery number one passes the low temperature charge protection. Let's go ahead and try battery number two now. Turn the charger on and no current into battery number two. Both pass the low temperature charge protection test. That is fantastic. So technically these batteries have passed just about every test we've thrown at them. Little concerning, we needed to get up to about 275 amps before the overcurrent protection kicked on. They did get a little warm. I think we saw about 130 degrees, 120 degrees, something like that on the top of the case after only a couple minutes, but they do the thing. I would definitely recommend having inline fuses or fuse breakers or, or something for protection. I wouldn't just rely on the internal BMS to to shut off, uh, you know, even at 130, 150 amps, it wasn't shutting off. So, so definitely protect your system with inline fuses or breakers. But other than, I mean, for $165 after tax for these tiny little mini batteries, kind of hard to beat. So let me know what you guys think. My name is Mike, K at MRD. Thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube. We'll see you next time, 73.